Gamers, I welcome you! Before the start of the main campaign, the Harmacists have come together and recorded a session zero. We divided it into two parts, which in total were about four hours long. The original plan was to just upload them, in order to give you guys a preview of what you will see here, however, the audio of the recording was, apart from some of it so horrendously messed up, that that just wasn't possible. Instead, I hereby present you a summary made by, well, me. Let's begin. Our story starts in the city of Corinia, one of the most important mobile cities of Minos. Outside of the city, right at the gate, its forte guards see a weird fella approach. It's Rock, the son of Rock, a massive Arcosauria. He wants to enter the city, and for that he wants to pay the guards, not with LMD though, but with a goat's leg. The guards of course don't let him in, but Rock doesn't understand. Such a leg can feed a whole family, why won't they take it? Meanwhile, another guard approaches the ones dealing with him. They talk briefly and then decide to let him in, but not before giving him a holo letter. Rock walks in through the gate, not really understanding anything. He just walks around asking random people whether they had seen someone he calls the Great Chief. When all of a sudden the holo letter starts beeping. Shocked, he throws it on the ground and jumps away from it. Pulling out his giant long bow, he carefully approaches it. In broad daylight and surrounded by regular people, by the way. After getting closer, he sees a building on the holo letter's screen, which he had already passed by earlier. Not picking the letter up, he makes his way to the building. In the meantime, another weird person entered the city. Katze. A cat girl talked with the guards in a civilized manner and got into Corinia without any problems. She also has a holo letter, which was given to her by her father. She is actually able to read what it says, however, it's not really detailed, it only mentions a place called Eden Logistics. She makes the decision to go to a bar called the Firebolt, where she pays the barkeeper in order to tell her what he knows about Eden. The only thing he can tell her is that it is near the slums. Once Katze gets near the slums, the holo letter starts beeping. It's a Morse code and she understands what it's saying. Mafia operation by Eden Logistics. Reward 5000 LMD. In addition to that, it also shows an image of a building. Katze takes note of everything and goes to that building. At the same time, a Sarkas warrior was having a staring contest with the Forte guards at Corvinia's gate. The guards of course don't want an infected devil to get in, but Hellbird is not really the one to try and discuss with them. But after a while, he just straight up says that he got summoned by Eden Logistics. The guards of course don't believe him, why would they want a Sarkas? But once he pulls out his holo letter, their mood changes. They seem confused, almost a bit scared, and allow him to enter. Once he gets in, the letter starts beeping. He's not able to read it, but he can see a building pictured on it. He scouts the back alleys of the area he is in for a ladder leading to a rooftop and finds one. From the roof, he can see the building clearly on the other side of town. And after getting back to the ground, he just walks to it. One of the few people entering the city today who did not have any problems with the guards was Kelkaidra, a Sancta who is a resident of Corinia and has been working for Eden Logistics for quite some time. The guards banter around with him as he is entering, saying that he definitely could find a job with better working conditions and that they will be at the Firebowl later and he should join them. Kelkaidra entered Corinia because he is supposed to deliver something, a holo letter. But as soon as he passes the gate, it starts beeping in Morse code. The stuff that it says seems really weird to him. It says something about a mafia operation and that Eden would give out a reward. This seems really out of character for the company to him. Also, why the reward? He is an employee. But he of course walks to the building. The guards at Corinia's gate were very confused about the amount of weirdos they met today. Just then, a hooded wanderer approached them. They ask them what they want, and they just answer, I belong to this city. The guards start laughing and want them to give a real answer. Once they mention Eden Logistics, they want them to take off their hood. 
Hesitantly, the person does and reveals herself. Her name is Semblance and she is a Draco. The guards are taken aback. They recognize her and hand her a holo letter. Someone paid us good money to hand you this, one of them says. She sighs in a very cute way and enters. Once through the gate, she examines the letter and tries to get why it was given to her, but it just starts beeping and shows an image of a building. Carefully, she makes her way to it. The building everyone is walking to is a rundown warehouse hidden somewhere in a back alley, guarded by two thugs. And the first ones to arrive are Rock and Kalkydra. Our crocodile boy approaches the thugs and tells them about being Rock, the son of Rock, and that he's looking for the great chief. They tell him to go fuck a rock, and one of them punches him straight to the face. Rock is shocked and terrified, he picks up his stuff that he dropped when he was hit, nods thankfully and leaves. Kelkaidra has seen everything and approaches the warehouse next. The thugs have already used up their brain power on Rock, so they just straight up want to punch him. But Kelkaidra tells them to calm down and pulls out his hollow letter. Now they want to shoot him with a crossbow instead. While the sad Rock is walking away from the warehouse, he bumps into Katze. He apologizes and wants to walk on, but the cat girl stops him. She lets him explain what made him so sad and then explains herself that Rock's day would be way better if he would make the fuck's day a lot worse. She wants him to help her with stealing from them. The two make their way back to the warehouse and see that the two fucks are about to execute a Sancta. They also see another person enter the scene. Halbert walks up to the fucks menacingly. They really don't understand why all of this is happening today, but they know that a big sarcas with a sword is dangerous. The one without the crossbow jumps back and reveals a big manticore tail. To this whole scene, Semblance finally arrives as well and in the last second she is able to jump in front of the bolt that was about to kill Kalkaidra. She doesn't want to see any more people getting hurt. What no one notices is that Katze in the meantime sneaked up to the crossbow guy, emptied his pockets and took away a machete which he was carrying. Rock wants to help with Katze's plan, takes out his longbow and shoots the manticore guy in the knee while shouting, look at me, I'm distracting you from being dropped. Kelkaidra took a moment to realize what was happening. I'm not getting paid enough for this, he says, gets up and pulls out a few darts he has. They are injected with alcohol, which he can ignite. He throws one and hits the manticore guy in the neck. By now he is lying on the floor, shouting profanities. The guy still standing wants to pull out his machete, but it's gone. He is overwhelmed with the situation. Semblance takes this opportunity to strike him with her rapier and proceeds with smugging at him. He is very angry, tries to shoot Katze, but fails. The battle ends when Halbert cuts the crossbow guy in half with his sword. Everything settles down. Kelkaidra takes a seat on the floor, pulls out a bottle of wine and starts drinking. Rock gets closer, approaches Halbert very closely, invading his personal space, but he is not looking menacingly, he looks fascinated. Halbert thinks it's another staring contest, but Rock kneels down in front of him. The crocodile wants to know whether the Sarkas is the great chief, but he just says that he doesn't talk about that time anymore. They both misunderstand each other, but Rock takes away from that exchange that Halbert is in fact the long lost great chief he is looking for. Rock thinks that Halbert is Gaviel. Semblance whispers to Kalkaidra asking him whether this was a family reunion, but the Sancta is fully fixated on his wine. Halbert sighs and turns his back towards the rock so that he would see the missing Arcosauria tail and understand that he was by no means a great chief, but since Rock is looking for Gaviel, he is a part of the Finn Tail faction and he sees Halbert's Sarkas tail as the thinnest Arcosauria tail he has ever seen. Now he is even more convinced that this is the great chief he is looking for. Since he had turned around, Halbert notices that the manticore guy had gotten up and was trying to walk along the wall and get away. He draws his sword with the intention to cut him in half, but Semblance gets in front of him, signaling that this is wrong. Halbert blushes and puts his sword away. The Draco girl stops the fuck and interrogates him. He warns them, tells them about how Alonso and his project would make their life living hell. 
Semblance takes away his weapons and asks him to go find the hospital. He leaves, but not before Halbert takes out the arrow that's stuck in his knee and gives it to Rock. Since everything has now completely settled down, Semblance asks everyone why they were here. Halbert just blushes and hands her his hollow letter. Rock says that he is here for the Great Chief. Kelkaidra just sees the letters and worries about the fact that his potential co-workers are absolute savages. And he was right. Since everyone seemed to be here for the same purpose, they decided to enter the warehouse and if you want to know how they did that, then you should definitely watch the door video on Polarisu's channel. But let's just say savage is a pretty fitting word. But once everyone was inside, the mafiosos inside the warehouse were already awaiting everyone. The warehouse was pretty big. In the area near the door it seemed to only store regular goods, but the further back you go, the more suspicious everything got. At the other side of it, there was a straight up laboratorium. In front of it, the boss was sitting, smoking two cigars at a time. Semblance tries talking with him, but he doesn't answer. So, now she throws the three hollow letters she got on the ground. She wasn't there the last time someone showed them to a mafia guy. While our crew and the two fucks with crossbows are getting ready for combat, the boss gets up and walks to the lab. He presses a few buttons and a human-sized capsule opens and out comes a girl with black hair and a robot arm. She is moving very slowly. The boss asks us who we think he is. Good question, Kelkaidra says, and asks him about who he actually is. His name is Alonso and he belongs to the Trifactor gang. Halbert is not having it, he threatens Alonso and Alonso is threatening him back while Rock is trying to de-escalate everything. Semblance feels very bad for the slow girl. She tells everyone that no one should go through something like that and that she would help her. The rest are free to follow her or not. The slow girl picks up a sword from the table. Alonso picks up a police baton and a few throwing knives which he puts between his fingers so that he can use them like wolverine claws. The fight is more than one-sided. Alonso is able to injure most of the group that just came together and the slow girl takes down both Katze and Kelkaidra. Semblance stands up to her, trying to talk her out of doing this, with no result. Halbert shouts at her that she should get away from the slow girl and although Semblance is not happy about that comment, she faces the reality of the situation. Semblance charges the slow girl with her rapier and she charges her with the sword on her robot arm. They both collapse, exhausted. In the meantime, Halbert was able to split Alonso's skull. After their boss was down, Rock tried to tell the two fucks that there is no point in fighting and that they should leave. One of them flees and the other one stays, which results in him being cut into two pieces by Halbert. As everything settles down, the only ones still standing are Halbert and Rock. Halbert, because he casted his arts and created a shield around him, Rock, because he was standing at the back most of the time. The two decide to leave the place without investigating anything any further. Halbert carries Semblance and the slow girl out, Rock carries Katze and Kelkaidra. They place everyone on the ground in a random back alley and wait around one hour until they slowly start getting up. Katze is not happy at all about Asia still being alive and Rock agrees, maybe they should have killed her. After all, Halbert and Rock have not tied her up and also not taken away her weapons when they carried her out. Who knows what could happen when she woke up. Kelkaidra notices exactly that and starts tying her up, while Halbert tries to explain to the cat and the crocodile why he kept her alive, vaguely remembering what Semblance said earlier. Both Semblance and the slow girl have woken up as well in the meantime. Are you not gonna attack us? The Draco girl asks while taking off the ropes used to tie her up. Not unless your psychopath friend causes a ruckus, she answers, pointing at Halbert. Halbert is not having it, the situation is very tense. Semblance asks the slow girl for her name. After thinking a little about it, she tells everyone to call her Asia. While the Draco and the sloth, Asia is a sloth girl just like seen by the way, go back and forth, Halbert asks the rest whether this wouldn't be a good time to finally clear up why they were here. After not really getting a response, he asks again, what, is no one curious about why this mysterious organization called us here? Well, it's been my job for years, Kelkaidra answers. Everyone slowly turns towards him. 
he doesn't understand and offers them some of his wine. Semblance refuses the drink and says that directions to Eden Logistics would be preferable. She then asks Rock and Halbert whether they had taken the hollow letters she had thrown on the ground with them. They of course haven't. Katze asks which of the gang's weapon and goods they have taken with them. Rock says no. While they debate about what to do next, Asia gets up. She walks up to Semblance and kisses her on the cheek, telling her that she is very sweet. Asia then walks past everyone, while passing Katze they insult each other and when getting to Halbert, he blocks the way, saying that she should stay with them until they had figured out what the hell was going on. Semblance is just standing behind them, blushing and stuttering, her hand on the cheek that Asia just kissed. Halbert is not happy about that and picks up Asia by the collar, holding her like a cat, until Semblance tells him to put her down, which he of course does. The Draco says that Asia is free to decide for herself whether she should stay or leave, and she decided to stay. The whole group starts walking towards the warehouse and once they arrive, they find the entire place to be swarming with mafiosos. Since most of them were unconscious just a few moments ago, they decide to not get anywhere near them. Instead, they follow Kelkaidra's directions to get to Eden Logistics, and after a while, they arrive at their destination. The building is very old and definitely has seen better days. It's also not in the nicest location, it's standing somewhere in one of the many back alleys of Corinia's slums. On its roof there is a neon sign which reads Eden Logistics, but the second E is flickering. The inside of the building is rather clean though, they enter the main lobby and at the far back of it there is a guy sitting at the desk. He stands up and proclaims to them, the master is gone. Welcome new masters, Eden Logistics is now used to command. He proceeds by kneeling in front of them. And just like that, session zero ended. What a cliffhanger! And the best thing is, you won't have to wait longer until the story continues. From now on, there's gonna be one session per week on the Hamas's channel. Every Sunday at 1 pm UTC plus zero, or to make it simple, two hours after the daily reset in Arknights. We hope you will tune in. Catch you there! In the meantime, let me thank my lovely channel supporters and operators and our four mighty channel commanders. Rip, Fritten, Zephyrinix and Zerfi. And to you, thanks a lot for watching, all the necessary links are in the description and I hope I will see you next time. Cheers!